All right. So we're going to practice using dot, which is a program that comes with the graph viz package, to draw finite state machines. So specifically, we're going to recreate some figures from the Beasley and Cartoonin finite state morphology book from chapter one, and then view those figures, create PDFs from those figures, and then copy the resulting files if they're not already on, if you're not already working on your local machine. Okay. So let's switch to the finite state morphology book. Okay. And we'll zoom in. So here's an example of a light switch modeled as two states. And we're going to start by drawing the finite state machine that goes along with it. So it's got two states, on and off, and then there's an arc from off to on and an arc from on to off. So in dealing with finite state machines, there's some terminology that is interchangeable. For example, finite state machine versus finite state network basically mean the same thing. Finite state machine can be a finite state automata, which generally would mean that you only have arcs on one side. You don't have arcs that also have a second side. That would be if you've got a finite state transducer. Then you would have pairs of labels on the arcs, one for the input side and one for the output side. This example only has arcs on, the, on one side. Uh, when we're doing drawings with dot, it is most convenient to just be working with finite state automata. Uh, there is, as far as I know, no good way of uh, drawing labels on two sides of the same arc in dot. It may be that I'm wrong. If you ever figure that out, let me know. But we're going to draw just on one side. Okay, so there's, there's what we're going for. So let's go to the terminal. Okay, and How do I exit what? Oh, like if you type dot and it does that? Yeah, so it's waiting for input, so hit control D. Control, or control, control C. Control C works. Yeah, control D would be telling it into file. If that doesn't work, uh, do control C. Um, OK, so we're going to start by creating a text file. Call it whatever you want. I would call mine foo.txt, but I already did that, so Make sure I remove it first, or foo dot dot. Okay. Okay. All right. So now I've got my editor open, whatever editor I'm most comfortable using, which for me is Emacs. And now we have to think: Do I remember how to create something? Create a basic uh, drawing in dot. If I do, that's great. If I don't. I go and open the dot manual. That's probably not going to work. Oh, for me, I guess it did. Otherwise, I would type graphviz dot manual. And I get to the helpful documentation for a drawing with dot that's 40 pages long. And oh, right here I noticed something that's useful, sort of, that tells me how to get create an output file. We'll get to that in a bit. However, in the modern age that we live in, you will almost never have to create PS files. Uh, back 20 years ago, before PDF was really a thing, uh, or at least not a popular thing, PS files were much more in vogue. Uh, but here we go. Here's the part we want. So we're going to create something called digraph. What 
What, what's with the die? Well, that's directional. So we're going to create a directional graph. We're going to give it a name, call it whatever I want. Let's call this uh, Beasley figure one. Okay. And I'm going to create two, I'm going to create state on that goes to off. And I'm going to terminate the line with a semicolon. And then I'm going to say off goes to on, and similarly have a semicolon. Can you go back up once you've typed something? Can I go back up once I've typed something? I'm in a text editor, so yes, I can go back up and down. If you are using cat, then you probably can't go back. Uh, but I would not recommend using cat as a text editor. It can be done, but it's fairly masochistic. Um, all right. Okay, so created this file. I've saved it. And now I'm going to see if my system administrator or me has installed a program called xdot. Uh, if you are on a Mac instead of on a Linux server, and if you have installed dot by going to the GraphViz webpage and downloading the whole package and running the installer, it is quite likely that you have a program on your computer that if you double click on that file, assuming it doesn't open it in Word, which it might try to do because dot is also the extension of Microsoft Word template files, but if you tell it not to open it in Microsoft Word, then it'll open it up. There's a program very similar to xdot that's built in when you install GraphViz on a Mac. Uh, but this gets us to why we SSH'd in with, gra with uh, graphics forwarding. So I'm going to say x dot foo dot dot. And it didn't work because presumably I forgot to log in with the dash SSH dash Y. So let's try that again. I'll exit. And yep, I didn't use dash Y. So dash Y or dash X, I'm being lazy and not authenticating. So now X dot foo dot dot opens up this nice pretty drawing like this. Yes? Yeah, if you're, if you're using the Linux subsystem on Windows to SSHN, which is perfectly fine to do, it may well be that you have to specially enable X forwarding and the X session. Uh, I don't know how to do that off the top of my head, but it should be fairly straightforward to do. Yes? Oh, that's bad. If you get a segmentation fault when you typed in SSH-Y, Oh, when, uh, you have to make sure that your X program is working. So uh, you can't see it in my recording here, but up at the top of the screen, there's X11. So you have to make sure that X11 is installed. Uh, it should be. It's usually in utilities. Uh, it may be that you have to specially install it if it's not already installed. X quartz would be work. X quartz would be fine. That's a different version of it. Different versions of Mac OS have different have different versions of the X11 framework. The Apple has gone through at various points, including it by default, not including it by default, and depending on which version you have and whether or not they did that, you might or might not have to install it, and it might be called X11 or it might be called X quartz. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah. Okay, all right. So this is um, how to do a basic drawing. I'll, I'll come help you in just one moment. First, I want to show you how to uh, export it to a PDF file, okay? So if instead, okay, so let's go back to the dot manual, okay? And notice this outdated command to create a PS file. So a PS file is a postscript file. If you're on a Mac, 
preview does in fact know how to open PostScript files, but it'll convert it to a PDF first. Um, if you were on Linux, GhostView knows how to open it, but why on earth would you be using GhostView? It's archaic. Um, no, that's not true. Well, yes it is. Um, okay, but anyway, we're going to do this same command, except we're, wherever it says PS, we're going to substitute PDF. Okay? I'm pointing this out because you might forget what I'm typing, but you can remember that it's in the dot manual how to do this. It just shows you how to do postscript files instead of PDFs, which they really would be nice if they fixed. Okay. Uh, all right, so I'm going to say dot. And by the way, the other way I can do this is I can say man dot. And then if I can look at the dot man page, and hopefully at some point in here, there we go, dash TPS, dash T ping. So if I want to create a PNG file instead of a PDF file, I can do that. Uh, I can create a GIF, although why would I create a GIF? Um, and it goes through and gives you a lot of detail about the, the language. But I'm going to use dot dash t is the type of file that I want to create. The type here is going to be a PDF. And then I say foo dot dot. And then I double check the, the, the manual to make sure I didn't forget anything. Oh, yes, I did forget something. This is important because otherwise I'm going to get a bunch of PDF data spat out onto my terminal screen and it'll be ugly. Let's see if, let me watch, watch, let's do it the wrong way, okay? Okay, that's what a PDF file looks like if you open it in text, okay? Uh, so what I actually wanted to do is either redirection or dash o foo dot pdf. Okay, and now there is a nice file called foo.pdf. Okay. All right. Now, the easiest way for me to get this onto my local machine is to exit out of here and then use SCP, which is a secure copy over SSH, from my local machine. Uh, and I'm going to type in the name of, so my name at the server, colon, and then where the file is located. And then where I want it to go on my local machine. Okay, so I copied it. And then I can, I'm on a Mac, so I can just say open and it'll open in whatever program is appropriate, which in this case is going to be preview. So I'm going to open, downloads, foo.pdf. And there I have it. 